Hey everyone, welcome to today's InDesign CC tutorial. Today's tutorial is on how to use the text wrap tools within Adobe InDesign. For this tutorial, we'll be using Adobe InDesign CC. However, you can use any modern version of Adobe InDesign, going back as far as even InDesign CS2, to utilize these techniques and follow along. Now, if you haven't already, you should go to the typography workspace within Adobe InDesign or go to the window menu and select the text wrap tool so you can follow along on how to use text wrap in Adobe InDesign. Using text wrap can actually be very convenient if you have to do a lot of print production or page layout work, especially since it gives you a lot of options in terms of the different types of layouts you can do when working with large bodies of text. So we'll go ahead and get started with covering a few of the basics of the text wrap tool. Now you'll notice with our square polygon that we have a bounding box set around it, whereas with our yellow uh, six-sided polygon, we have that set to wrap around the actual shape of the object, as the same we do for our circular object here. So we have two objects that are bound by their shape with the text wrapping around them, and another wrapped by a bounding box. Now. With regard to our square object, I'm actually going to show you what happens when you don't have text wrap so that you can kind of understand a little bit of the difference. Now, as you can see, when we select no text wrap, the text goes either in front of or behind the object, just depending on where it is in the layer space. When you do use a text wrap, however, the text isn't disrupted and just wraps around it and flows through to the next column or the next line space, etc. Across threaded text, it goes multiple columns, as you see in our page layout here. When you use the jump wrap, this is actually something that you'll use more when you're doing things like ebooks, because the text frames for those will go always top to bottom. So that's how you'll kind of want to take advantage of that. I don't find it particularly useful in print design, but you may find a way to actually use it constructively. Next, I'm going to show you how offsets work. Now, I'm going to select our circular polygon here, um, which has the text bound to the shape. But you can also do this with things that are wrapped to a bounding box, too. And you can toggle back and forth between and just see which one looks right for what you're doing. Now, when you're doing this, you can actually unbound the um, top, bottom, left, and right as far as how the padding works for the object, and you can actually manipulate that as you see fit so that the space between the individual paddings for top, right, left, and bottom don't have to necessarily be all bound together. Now, this is particularly important when you're working with objects that are bound to their shape instead of a bounding box because the actual shape may have more space needed in terms of the offset for the left and right or the top and bottom just depending on what the actual shape is so it's important to keep that in mind when you're doing the text wrapping to kind of understand what the nature of the shape is and work accordingly within that when you're setting the offsets or when you're choosing which type of text wrapping you want to do for your frame or for your object but essentially we've covered here how you actually wrap text in each of these different scenarios and how the tool itself works. Um, it's just important to have a better sense of overall layout design and how you want to best to utilize your shapes and that's going to inform your decisions here beyond what I have in the tutorial. You know, This is just actually how the tool works. You have these different options but it's up to you as a designer to be able to use them creatively and effectively to produce the kind of results that you need. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this InDesign tutorial. I'll be doing these as often as I can to just help you guys out with a better sense of how to utilize the tool. And I may actually do some workshops on overall layout design, so stay tuned for that. And I guess I'll catch you guys on the next video.